Hello, I'm Luke O'Neill and here I am in my lab in the Trinity Biomedical Sciences Institute. So here we are in 2021, a whole new year, and it keeps going on and on, doesn't it? Lots of science still to talk about, many discoveries. Of course, we've got the vaccine process, great hope there. But Ireland at the moment is in a bad place, as we all know. But we're about to turn a corner, we think. And of course, the talk is all about vaccines. Every day, there's news about vaccines. You've never seen the speed at which this is coming in terms of new developments and new findings. And it's great news because, as we all know, the vaccination program is the key strategy to get us out of this. So first of all, AstraZeneca, They've applied now for approval with the European Medicines Agency. That should come in the next couple of weeks. And now we've got vaccine number three. And remember, AstraZeneca is a bit more convenient. It can be stored in the fridge, which is very advantageous. And secondly, AstraZeneca have recently said there's no need to wait 15 minutes. Now with the, the Pfizer vaccine, and the Moderna vaccine, which is coming soon as well. You gotta stay and, and wait 15 minutes. Some have to stay 30 minutes, since there's a risk of allergy. This one, you don't need to wait. So in other words, you can get through a lot more people per time, you know, through a day, for instance, a lot more people can be vaccinated. And then secondly, the fourth vaccine, Good news again, Johnson & Johnson is the next one that we're waiting for. Uh, they reckon by the end of this month, beginning on the 21st of January is one prediction, the data will now be there from their trial. That will be given immediately to the FDA in America and the EMA in Europe. This one gives another advantage. It's a single shot vaccine. You don't need to come back for a second shot, which of course is much more convenient. And then secondly, just like AstraZeneca, it keeps in the fridge. Now you can imagine if the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is 80, 90% efficacious. That could take over the whole market because it's much more convenient and it's a single shot vaccine. And a minimum, uh, we're predicting by mid to late February, maybe early March for definite, four vaccines will be available for use. There'll be no issue with supply then and we can anticipate vaccinating all the Irish people, which would be fantastic. Another really interesting study about testing, and of course we talk about testing all the time, but guess what, saliva seems to be a great place to do the test. The other test at the moment is called nasopharyngeal swabbing. They stick a swab up your nose or down your throat, and it's a little bit uncomfortable, still okay. I mean, people should still take that test if they're asked, but saliva will be more convenient. And guess what, saliva is a very good predictor if you've been infected, first of all, and you're carrying the infection. And secondly, the level of virus in the saliva predicts you know, how sick you actually might get. So it's a pretty good predictor of future illness emerging, and it correlates very well then with other things that are happening in your body. So the talk now is really to replace the nasopharyngeal swabbing test with a saliva test, and that may become more of a reality in the coming weeks. So a positive development there in terms of testing. Pets. There's a study showing an increase in obesity in pets because of the pandemic. And 71% of veterinarians have said they're seeing an increased rate of obesity in pets. And of course, it's a worry because it causes health problems in pets. Uh, two reasons why it's happening. One is we've been giving them too many treats at home or at home more, and we feed them more food, which is one issue that we worry about. And then the second reason as well is, by the way, strangely less exercise over Christmas. The dogs and cats weren't getting enough exercise. So the message is, get your dog out and make sure to give lots of exercise to your pets. And you can hear about these updates and more on my weekly COVID-19 update with Pat Kenny on Newsdown.